Oh, welcome to the Will Hill Show. Here's the riddle. What kind of room has no windows nor doors? Find out at the end of the Will Hill Show. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I'm looking. All right, welcome to another episode of the Will Hill Show. Today we have Rashawn. I don't want to mix up his last name because I did it right before <laughs> this. So I'm going to let him introduce yourself. Go ahead, Rashawn. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rashawn Spikes Reddick, um, writer, producer, musician, all that good stuff. So Rashawn, man, tell us what you've what you been on, man. Uh, I've been super busy, man. I've been super busy. Um, Recently, I've been working on a web series, a science fiction web series, uh, revolving around a group of teens, uh, a group of like late teens, college students, okay. that start having supernatural abilities after their professor commits suicide. Um, Wait, so, it's like X Men or some shit. Kind of, <laughs> kind of like that. I, I was thinking more along the lines of like Stranger Things, but like older. So okay. like they're all in college and they're dealing so with it, a bunch I'm of. I'm sorry to cut you off. Is it? Uh, like superpowers or just supernatural things? I'd say it's like, I keep it vague, but it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of in the middle between like actual superpowers and like like actual just like supernatural. It's like sort of in the middle. I'll oh, say like it's, it's not like middle. Umbrella Academy, no? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. It's not like people with like heat vision and stuff, but it's like more than just like a, you can see ghosts or something. It's like okay. sort of in the middle, in the between. That's dope. So what else do you do? Oh, man, I was trying to prep. For this mm. interview, and my man Rashawn is everywhere. So <laughs> break it down thank now. You, all the you. stuff that you do. Yes. Yeah, so uh, on top of working a full time uh, day job, I am a writer. I'm a producer. Um, I'm also like I do. I have my own podcast. I make music. I'm trying to release an album by the end of the year. Um, I'm trying to like finish the web series that I'm working on. Uh, I dabble in acting a little bit, yeah. so yeah, I'm just a, a jack of all trades. I just love all art forms, really. Yeah. Just, uh, so when it comes to the music, what what side of the music would you say you're on? Yo, know, we <laughs> feel like right next to these trains, and it'd be blowing yeah. the fuck out of me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right. When it comes to the music, what side would you say you're on? Are you like making beats? Are mm. you Sitting there playing the guitar, you sitting there playing the drums, what, what are you doing? Uh, so, I think I'm in a, a middle, and I'm going to keep saying this, I guess. Like, I'm just <laughs> everywhere, like, every aspect of music I love. Like, so, I really like the producing side of things. Like, I like sitting in the, the dark room with the headphones on and just, like, you know, going at it on the producing software. But I also love writing music, and I love, like, performing. And, um, by the way, I have a performance coming up, too. I, on the on July twenty seventh, I believe. Where? But, let, let them know. Uh, it's at the Metro uh, in Chicago. I I'm not sure of the address, but <laughs> you'll see it on all my social medias. So when it comes up, are you writing? Are you are you like writing notes? You're like Mozart, or you're writing lyrics? Mostly lyrics. So oh, okay. I'm like musician wise, like I'm self taught. So I just taught myself how to play from listening by ear, watching YouTube, all of that good stuff. So when I write my actual music. I sort of just play around with stuff, oh, whatever sounds. Yeah, I play okay. piano. So, like, I play around with stuff to see what sounds nice, like, layer it, add a bunch of stuff, and then, then I write the lyrics. Um, so, usually, I will have, like, I'll write the actual music first, and I'll have, like, like just that music in, like, my phone or something for, right. like, sometimes years, because I don't have, like, lyrics to it the yet. Right but, like, there. one day, like, I'll listen to the song again, and then, like, lyrics will literally just, like, come in my head, and I just, like, have to write it down. So, so are you performing? Are you singing? What, what is it? Yeah, so I sing as well as... Can you sing? <laughs> I, so, I'm going to be super honest. Like, I'm not, like, the best singer. singer. Like, I'm, right. I have, I've had no training for singing or anything, but I think I just really, like, have the passion, and I think, I mean, I can hold a note. Right. I'm not, I'm not terrible, but um, Said yeah, I'm not gonna. Mind, I'll, huh? Yeah, I'm also not gonna flaunt like I'm the world's greatest singer. So, yeah. so if you had to pick one, which one would you say is your stronger thing that you're doing? Um, 
I think really just uh, creating like story, creating emotion. Right. So like that might I feel like that could span over everything that I'm doing. I think, but at the core, I love like creating narrative. Like whether that's like creating some sort of story in my right. music or creating an actual story for like a, the series that I'm writing. Mm -hmm. I think I just love like evoking emotion and creating story out of nothing because essentially right. that's what we're doing as artists like i always say that like as an artist as a writer like i'm able to live like a thousand lives in one right so like i can if i write like a thousand characters that's like <laughs> that's all the lives that i get to live in just this one it i'm makes just things glad interesting. for something new that's not 90s nostalgia like <laughs> yeah, that's that's the era that we're in right now definitely nine everything 90s i feel like i'm back. stuck in the 90s everything is always 90s nostalgia just yeah i look back onto the night i'm like okay i lived it all right thanks like, yeah. <laughs> although i mean 90s do like they do have a special you know part in my heart I mean, yeah I 80s think, too i think that's pretty much what we grew up on mm -hmm. but i don't me personally i'm ready for something the new new. Yeah, right. I, yeah i i think about that a lot like what's the new because each era like in life like you can see like the the specific music type that you right know, is yeah. set for that era so i'm like we're hitting the 20s again next year. So I'm like waiting, like is jazz gonna be the new thing? I'm just, I'm super excited to see like what like the artist's world or like just the world period has right. for the, this next decade that we're about to hit. So what what type of genre would you say that Eventide is? I would say Eventide Effect uh, is a dark psychological drama. Yeah. So I'd say definitely you have some really dark aspects. I mean, the first five minutes of the show, the professor kills himself. And so it's not like gratuitously. It's not like I, we don't, you know, romanticize suicide and everything because it's a very serious subject. But I think it's a dark, a very dark subject, but a subject that's needed to right, talk about. Right. Um, it's something that is real. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's real. And then... Especially with people that like you wouldn't expect to be like in a lecture hall and like your professor right right <laughs> commit suicide like right in front of you. So I I definitely like shock. So like throughout the series, like yeah. you'll see a lot of things that you didn't see coming. Like I love shock. I love twists. I love like like the plot thickens. Yeah. Like I love all. No, of I, I love a great twist. And like every time I see any film or any show with a great twist, I think about that. Um, Adult Swim show, uh, Robot Chicken, mm -hmm. and he go, what a twist. Like, <laughs> every time I see that, I go, what a twist. <laughs> like, I exactly. love it. I love it. Like, all of M. Night Shyamalan movies, mm -hmm. like, has a great twist at the end. And it's like, yeah. M. Night, M. Night is a really good, yeah. really good film. Just, We're not going to talk about Avatar, the last airbender, that movie. No, no. I mean, we knew where that was going, movie. though. Let's, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, not much twist he could have put. <laughs> yeah. We knew exactly where that was going. So, um, I had a question and I totally forgot. Oh, while I was you know, trying to learn more about you, mm -hmm. seeing you playing with all these bugs and stuff, can you explain what that is? Yeah, so my, my day job, I work for an environmental nonprofit um, and we essentially partner with another nonprofit and we take um, at risk youth, um, like inner city youth, and we take them out and show them a life besides like that one block area that right. a lot of them just stay on. Go on the next block. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we take them out in the forest reserves and we, we just, we, just give them like a, another aspect of life and we show them things that they might not necessarily see uh, in the urban areas. Right. Like something as simple as like things that we take for granted, like salamanders or like birds and like stuff that you don't usually see like right. on the block, you know? So it's a very fulfilling job. And I like as hard as it is, like I really, <laughs> I really enjoy it. So were you that weird kid always playing with the bugs when you were younger? Actually, like when I was younger, I, I actually didn't even like, I didn't like bugs. Right. Um, like I wasn't scared of them, but I didn't really fuck with them like right. that. Um, but like with the job, I definitely have grown like a love for a yeah, yeah, insects and just like, and this is going to sound super metaphysical, but like, cause everything is connected. Right. So like I feel more connected, even with like the, sm the smallest little bugs that's right, like yeah. crawling around. And I just think about 
like the like the sense of consciousness that's in this tiny life form and right. then you like you scale all the way up to like a whale right and it's just like life <laughs> life is beautiful it's like you have these life forms that are humongous and then you have these ones that like are microscopic so. right yeah that's like to me that makes a full complete circle of life like exactly you can't have the big ones <laughs> without the small ones <laughs> exactly you know? and yeah. everything in between um what made you start writing? Um, like, what was your inspiration to start writing? Cool. So, my inspiration to start writing, I think, was just an outlet. Really, it was just an outlet for um, for me and something that I felt like I wanted to say. Right. But the beauty of writing is like you can you can actually like write and people have to read right. or like if they're reading it if they choose to read it then like they have to continue reading but if like you're talking like they can just like <laughs> zone like zone just out. Yeah, zone yeah. out or like tone <laughs> you out and it's easier for me like now it's easier to actually talk to people when that but when i was growing up it was much easier for me to put my thoughts on paper and like put my thoughts in sort of like a narrative form right for other people to sort of like soak it in and see what i actually want to right. say um but yeah that's that was my inspiration so what was your first passion what came first chicken or the egg or <laughs> <laughs> the writing or the music what, what came first honestly like writing came first like yeah. i i remember i was like whenever i like actually learn to start to write like since then and this sounds super cheesy but since then like i've been into creating stories right. i like remember winning this contest like i won like five hundred dollars which sucks because someone stole the five hundred dollars but <laughs> it sucks because so yeah someone stole it but like that gave me the confidence to right. like you can actually do this you know Brashawn. like you can actually write like and you're good at it too um and after like actually writing that particular story, I believe like it was like it was a story about um, like a storm or something like that. It was pretty simple, but like I think I added just a bunch of like me inside of the story. Yeah. And I think that is a lot of um, my writing style. Like even if it's a fictional story, I add, and I think a lot of writers do that. Like they, they sort of incorporate themselves. Drop, yeah, at some they point. sort all of right. drop a little bit of themselves and all of their work. So what's next? Hopefully, um, what's next is just continuing to expand my influence and continuing to like be able to self-express and be able to spread love and spread art and. Um, Hopefully someone picks up the Eventide effect <laughs> and hopefully someone picks up my album that I'm dropping and just, I guess, continue to seek out art, seek out love and yeah. put you, it out um, in the universe. born and raised in Chicago? Yes. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Chicago. Uh, I lived in the suburbs for uh, quite a few. Okay, so are but, you sh actually Chicago or are you in the burbs? Right, so I, let I me clear that. When let, they got the line, <laughs> Chicago or not Chicago. So <laughs> let me clear that up because I know that's a huge thing. So I was born, actually, fun fact, I was born in police station uh, because we live now, right next door. You came out the womb, boy. Bad. Look. <laughs> we All live right, right, right next door. Get fingerprints right now. <laughs> yeah. We live right next door to a police station. Uh, and my mom actually gave birth to me herself. Um, and she like couldn't get to the hospital fast enough because right. I was born like at five o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> she went over to the police station, and gave birth to me on the police floor. Oh god! So from and I was actually on TV like from inception of being born. So <laughs> um, I, I just feel like I'm just meant to do like something great in life. Um, but back to the Chicago thing. Um, yeah, I was born in Chicago in a police station. And then I was raised. From like birth until like I'd say like maybe like five years yeah. old, and then we sort of like moved around like the surrounding suburbs. Oh, okay. So typically I just say Chicago. Early. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What what suburbs? Um, south suburbs, like the Dalton area. And That's then... still Chicago. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody say that shit. That's just exactly. still Chicago. I feel like it's not Chicago once you hit Harvey. Harvey has. It's, okay. It has its own I did. Climate. I went to school in Harvey though. Yeah. It yeah, has its I, own climate. Everything else is like so close. Harvey is something well else. Yeah. Just call it Chicago. All right. So we're gonna take a real quick break. I'm gonna talk about our Patreon, Third Post Media. That is us. This is us. Third Post Media. Everything that we do, we have a lot of content that we've been filming. 
is coming out. And to help us with this cause, go to our Patreon, donate a dollar, a two. This, like, seriously, that stuff, the, even the small amounts, help us get better equipment, uh, better guests, more time to have better guests. I mean, every small thing. So go to our Patreon. You can see me, Will Hill, Curtis, Derek. You see the people behind the scenes. Curtis shaking his head. No, you won't see Curtis. But his name is somewhere <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> well, make sure y'all most definitely go ahead and check out the Patreon. And if you can, most definitely give a dollar or two. I know tax money gone, but man, so y'all claim y'all working. Give a brother a dollar. <laughs> How do you say it? I keep saying, what is it? The Evan Tide effect. Evan. Okay. So it's a debate even amongst like, the <laughs> production crew. Like, how do you pronounce it? Like, literally, I like I say the Eventide effect, and then like I googled it, and it said Eventide, and then I googled it the next day, and it said Eventide. So I like at this point, I don't even know. It's like whatever you feel comfortable with <laughs> at this point. What is yours? What do you prefer? You prefer I Evan, prefer Eventide. The Eventide. I think it just goes well with effect. Eventide effect. How did that come about? Where, where did Eventide come from? Cool. So, Eventide actually is a time of day. Um, it is Who's right. Me? <laughs> yeah. So it is like basically dusk. It's like when the sky is like dark gray, dark blue, uh -huh. super right before dark, super atmospheric. Yeah, and exact like that's what I'm trying to emulate with the entire series. Okay. Um, and that's actually the name of the fictional town that the series is set in, Eventide, Illinois, which is a small. Uh, town like in southern Illinois, right on the border. So it's a real place. Missouri. No, no, no. no. Oh, this is this oh. is just all backstory that I came up with. Okay. <laughs> it's a small town in southern Illinois, right past the border of Missouri. So. Oh man, a bunch of hicks. <laughs> yeah, and that's what we touch on racism in the series too. And oh, like man. I'm touching on a bunch of different social issues, like wrapped in science fiction. So definitely racism is one of them. We touch, uh, we talk about the LGBT community. We talk about like one of the main characters is non-binary. One of the main characters. Oh God, is, you're going in there, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Because I feel like these are all voices that like are not being like heard. Yeah. And throughout history, just like historically, like haven't been heard. Right. And so I want to be that director, that writer that hears them. And gives them that platform. Right. So. Well, all right, here you go. Who's your favorite character? Oh wow, I don't want to choose favorites. Like, oh, you got okay, to. so favorites to write or favorite, like I don't know. Just have 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 you solidify your favorite? Who's your favorite character? How okay, so I'll, how, I'll put it like this: <laughs> the first the first character that I wrote mm -hmm. was the character of Jason Powers. Okay. And funny story, like I tell this story a lot. I was working in UPS at the time and just like mundanely packing <laughs> boxes. And that's like, that's how I come up with a lot of my stories. Most of them come like through dreams, yeah. but also a lot of them come when I'm like doing mundane things. So like, I just got this idea of like a, like a professor with like a dark, like sort of hidden agenda right. that's sort of like, like this crazy sort of out of the box sort of professor but also like he has a heart and so like that like after that i sort of actually emulated that and i would like go into character and like say some lines and like because i'm super like like method like method acting like yeah, i'm method, method right yeah exactly so like while while i'm writing like i become the character so i became jason powers and all of like the eventide effect sort of just like stemmed off of him right and then like we we got the uh professor that he sort of replaces the the professor that kills himself he replaces him and then you got the students and then each of the students have their lives and the parents um Lauren, one of the main characters, like her parent is um, Elias, who is actually the police officer that um, is on the, the case of okay, like why. Yeah, he's a detective that is trying to figure out why Anthony, Anthony Young, which is the professor that kills himself, committed suicide. Because right. they go back. They go back before he was a detective, before Anthony was a, right. was a uh, professor. professor. So it hits home because like not only... Is this a small town and they've never experienced suicide like this, right. especially a professor, but also like this is like one of his good friends from before. Like they right, kind of yeah. fell off a little bit and like went their own separate ways, but now he's Not like never on bad terms type thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And now he's coming back like 
oh, holy shit, like now I have to figure out why this happened. And not only that, but this is like, how is this affecting my child? Because um, his daughter, Lauren, is was part of the class that actually like witnessed that. And right. so how is this? How's this affecting my life? How's this affecting her life? How's this affecting like the entire town? Cause right. like I am trying to like keep everything together. And then on top of all of that, it's um, just just the normalness of like stress in college life for like the, the kids, the normalness of stress for like just being a, a detective period. Just right. it's a bunch of layers of things with science fiction because i love science fiction that's like my one of my favorite genres to write and to uh to actually watch what i always found confusing is why do they call it science fiction but then like you got like like fiction and non-fiction yeah i'm like that is like the most backwards things ever because you go yeah, from fiction I, to being not real then non-fiction to like so if I, if I say fiction i think fake right and then non-fiction is not fake I'm like, why wouldn't it be? Because <laughs> science is real. Yeah, it makes sense. And <laughs> why would you go real then not real? You know what I'm saying? It's definitely a very eclectic subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's why I like it. Like, science fiction is like a realm of its own. Right, yeah. You know? And it's like based off of like some realness, but also like some stuff that quite not is real, like may not be real at that time, or is based off of something that. Israel, like a werewolf. Like, <laughs> it's All based right. off of an actual wolf, but so I asked about your favorite. So mm-hmm. now I want the opposite end. Who's your least favorite? Least favorite. Wow. Um, this is hard. Like most people would say, like <laughs> the villain, but I actually really enjoy Bro, writing villains. The villains are dope. Yeah, I love writing villains. Like I love delving into their character. And right, because you have to give them like a real purpose. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, like, like. Like so, Thanos. <laughs> Who's the most useless character? <laughs> um, the extra walking past. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I, think, I don't want to call him useless. I feel like you know, everybody has Yeah, a I was going to say, well, I think your, everyone who's your, who's your has a favorite. favorite. Who's your least favorite? Um, I, like, I don't Who's know. the red-haired stepchild of the <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I think when you, so when you guys see the series, I think maybe Adam will be your least favorite just because he's an <laughs> asshole. Um, and I wrote him like that on purpose. Right. And he has a good character arc. And I don't want to spoil anything, but um, definitely I think he is, he was the most fun to write. Right. One of the most fun to write, but he's also a very difficult character. So I can see why people <laughs> wouldn't like him. So if you could go back and rewrite a series, not mm-hmm. like totally rewrite it, but go back and redirect the series, what series would you go back in? Hmm. Like right off the bat, Twilight Zone popped in my head. Like, yeah, think you can I do love, it better. Yeah, I think Wait. definitely. I actually have like the original or the reboot. I haven't seen the the reboot, okay, so although original. I want to see it. Jordan Peele is awesome, but um, the original. Yeah. And I watched actually to prepare for writing the Eventide Effect. I watched the original Twilight Zone right. on Netflix. Yeah. So it's a very creepy show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. So. I mean. Wasn't it like a spinoff like of the um, Alfred Hitchcock stuff? Basically? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and then I mean, art just continues to right. influence and continues. Like you think about like I guess just moving on to like some music side of things. Like you think about Prince, but before him it was like Little Richie, and before right. him it was someone else. And yeah, the music just continues to influence and continues to evolve. Right. Same thing for all art, I think. So, again, if you can go back since you're in the music. What movie or opening scene music score would you redo? Oh wow, um, I don't, I don't know if I would even. I guess I'm like playing, <laughs> I'm like playing it safe. Like I don't want to redo anybody's work, but I would probably no, dismiss collaborate with them. Maybe. Um, I'd probably collaborate. I think Alan Silvestri is really great. He he scores um, like all the Avengers movies. Okay. So I'm a huge Avengers fan, Marvel fan, period. Right. So I think I would collaborate with him. Or like um, the Dixon brothers, I think, um, wrote Stranger Things soundtrack, the entire Stranger Things soundtrack. And I am actually scoring the Eventide effect as well, you know, since right, I did yeah. music too. And they are huge influences for the Eventide soundtrack too. So, um, I had another question. I am spacing out 
this goddamn interview. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck it, man. Let's get ready to wrap this shit up then. Um, so basically, at the end of every interview, we do uh, 30 seconds, no, 30, 30 seconds, right? 30 second rapid fire. Uh, basically, okay. I'm going to ask you a bunch of random questions that have nothing to do with nothing we talked about. Okay. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, so um, are we ready? Mm-hmm. Favorite car? Um, Maserati. Favorite movie? Um, the Avengers Endgame. Endgame? Uh, favorite car? Did I say car? Yes, you I did. Said car. Favorite fuck? God damn. Favorite fuck? Um, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, favorite city? Um, Chicago. What part? North, south, east, west? What, what you got? Uh, I, I like it all. I like it all. Favorite I, shoe brand? Um, shoe brand, probably, I guess Adidas. That was Adidas. the last one I bought. Oh, after Dead Rose? How can you do it after Dead Rose? Your, your knees are, you got no knee braces? <laughs> no. About Adidas is <laughs> favorite shoe. Y'all hear this, man? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. So we're going to wrap up the Will Hill Show. Bashan, tell everybody where they can find you. Cool. So, um, also, thanks for the interview. You can find me at Bizarre, B-S-R, that's B-I-Z-Z-A-R-R-E, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can find me at BK Spikes Reddick. So, yeah. And I'm Will Hill. You can find me everywhere, all social media platforms. Simply just Will. This is the third post media production. We out here doing this thing. Shout out to Derek. Shout out to Curtis. I pointed to the wrong people, but shout out to both of them. <laughs> um, thanks, Bashan. Thanks again for coming out. Thank Appreciate you so you. much. Hey, y'all, he was late as hell. Uh, uh, let's wrap this up. I just flew in from LA. Sorry. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot y'all was here. The answer to that riddle what kind of room has no windows or doors? It's a mushroom. Still don't know what's over here.